Hey there, everyone. Welcome to the You Can Run Show. I'm Barn with You Can, and we are thrilled to be joined by one of our great Team You Can ambassadors, Jennifer, today. Hey, Jennifer, how are you doing? Hi, Barn. How are you doing? Doing fantastic. Thanks so much for being part of the show and for sharing your running story with us. Really appreciate you joining us. Thanks for having me. Of course. So, Jennifer, tell us some, um, you know, being Global Running Day, uh, we always like to start out with asking people how they got started running. So when did running start for you and, and what really fueled your interest in becoming a runner or being a runner? Well, my story started a little bit later in life. I wish I had figured it out a lot sooner, but I didn't start running until I was almost 35 years old. So I've just been doing it for the past five years. And what kind of prompted me to start running was a diagnosis with high blood pressure. I also weighed 140 pounds more than what I weigh right now. And when I got diagnosed with high blood pressure, that was my wake up call that something had to change. I knew that I needed to change my diet and I needed to start exercising. Um, I knew diet alone wasn't going to work. I tried that in the past and it's just not enough. You know, you have to move as well. And I had been walking, well walking gets boring pretty quickly, and I decided to try running and I entered some 5Ks and thought, wow, these are kind of fun. I enjoy doing this and you can go out there and you can compete where there's other athletes out there, which is something I never thought that I could be, but you're only competing against yourself. And that's what I love about running is that you're going out there and you're just trying to do better than you did before. Um, and I could go out there, set a goal, work hard for it and achieve it and um, kind of fell in love with those two letters PR that runners love to talk about and um, just remembered you know growing up my dad always said can't never did anything and so I was like okay so I'd go out there and I'd say gosh I don't know if I can run six miles well I'd say you know can't never did anything go for it and then you know that's 10k turned into a half and that half turned into a full pretty quickly so kind of got the bug for sure. <laughs> That's amazing. And, you know, I was, if, if you're saying as a child was can't, you know, you said can't never can get can't never gets you anywhere. Right. Right. Um, right. You guys were probably saying you can far before we ever were. So. <laughs> um, but, you know, you talked about Jennifer uh, entering the sport um, kind of when you when you found out, you know, we're making some changes with your health. And um, was it intimidating for you at the time, having never run to say, like, OK, I'm going to suddenly start running. And, and if it was what did you do to get over that hump to actually get past that intimidation and say it's not just going to be an idea it's actually something i'm going to do it's absolutely intimidating to start and i always tell everyone if you hear have heard the saying the first mile is a liar it's so true because you know i've run three full marathons now and i don't know how many half marathons and i still go out there some days and i think oh this run is not going to be a good run today but it's that first mile you just have to get through you have to push through and what running has taught me is that if you you know follow a training plan you do the work your body will adapt and your body can do it you just have to be willing to do it in steps and to to get to that point um, so it was intimidating for sure, but I look at it as a challenge and that's what I liked about it. And I kept telling myself, if you can lose 140 pounds by just putting your mind to it, then you can run a 10th of a more mile. You can run to that next mile marker. You can do it. Just keep going. So. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, you, you just kind of said it all better than, you, you know, that, that just that mentality is really so powerful and, and really for you personally, it's really helped you achieve incredible things. When you started with the five Ks, you mentioned you got addicted to those words PR and, and, you know, you probably saw that improvement, but when did it click that like, Hey, I'm actually going to take this and run a marathon. Um, early on, did you know that I'm somebody that if I get into this, I'm going to take it all the way to the distance or, or did that come Later oh, on. absolutely not. I mean, I still, you know, was out there in the beginning thinking, oh, I don't even think I can really call myself a real runner, you know, at first. And that first year I just did 5Ks and 10Ks. Um, and that was that was enough for me. You know, that was a challenge because they are hard, you know, at first. And after that first year, a friend and a coworker of mine said, you had to sign up for a half marathon. And I just like nervously laughed at her and thought she was crazy. And then about a half hour later, I was holding my phone registering for a race and spending almost a hundred dollars on a race. And I thought, what am I doing? Like, this is crazy to spend this kind of money for a race. 
But once I spent that money on it, I was committed. I said, well, if I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do it. So I get online. I start looking up, you know, the beginners half marathon plans from Hal. And I'm like, okay, this is what I've got to do. I've got 12 weeks to do this. This is what I do on this day. And I'm going to run it. And so I just followed it. And I'm one of those people. If you give me a plan, I'm going to check the boxes and I'm going to go through it. And I believed in it. And, you know, so much of running is mental more than physical. And so I thought, you know, Hal's supposed to be the expert. I'm going to follow his plan and I'm going to going to see what happens. And I towed the line and that takes more courage than than actually doing the race It's just showing up there to do it. And um, I showed up and I finished that first half marathon in May of 2016. And I said, wow, why would anyone want to run this twice? And it was less than a month later, I was registered for my first full marathon. And even then I thought, oh, I'm not telling anybody that I signed up for this race. I'm just going to start training for it. I'll start doing my long runs and they'll gradually get a little bit longer and I'll see how they go. Because if I tell people about it and I decide this is too hard, then I'm going to have to back out of it and then I'm going to be embarrassed. So I thought I'll just take it one week at a time. And that's what you do. You know, you just go one week at a time and you go a little bit further than you did the week before. And, you know, every week's a PR then because you've gone further than your longest run. And before you know it, I was ready to do that first marathon and I was scared, but crossing that finish line was amazing. So. And hearing you kind of talk through it and and detail the journey, I mean, it it really was something that was a journey for you. It's not like you just jumped into it and said, you know, I'm going to do a marathon. Like you kind of approached it really smartly doing, getting a lot of experience, doing a lot of races, building up in distance. Um, So when we kind of look at when you started running and then to the point at when you ran your first marathon, like how much time did you say there was in between that? And and if you even just have to estimate, like how many races of various distances do you think you might have done? Yeah, it wasn't really, you know, that long. I had done one year of 5Ks and some 10Ks. And then that next year, I did a half marathon in May and I did a full marathon in November. So... Yeah. So I, I pretty much jumped all in, um, you know, within that period of two years, I went from doing nothing to doing a full marathon less than two years. And, you know, it was gradual. I tried to be smart about it because once I did start running, I didn't want to have to stop, which is crazy to think, you know, if you told me that five years ago, I was like, no way. But once I was running, I thought, I don't want to do anything to jeopardize this. So I tried to play it really smart and tried to do what I could do to make sure that I could keep running every day. So in using running, you know, as also, uh, while well, simultaneously uh, trying to lose weight, like you, you shared with us, um, as you go up in distance, you know, you hear these adages, like you can't train for a marathon and lose weight. And, you know, if you kind of approach nutrition, the traditional way, which is uh, uh, the marathoners have thought about it, which is, you know, kind of loading up on the sugars and um, kind of the simple carbohydrates all the time. It, that, that very well may be true. What, what's worked for you? How have you been able to, you know, strike kind of that dual balance and, and, you know, how, how do you kind of have anything you've done nutritionally that's that's worked for you? Well, I certainly heard all of those sayings, too, where people would say, well, you can't lose weight while you're training for a marathon. You know, just give it up. You may even gain some weight, which I thought, well, I certainly don't want to do that. And I still wanted to lose a little bit more, you know, to to get to where my goal was. So that was kind of scary when I started that first marathon training. But I just tried to continue doing what I had been doing, which was eating sensibly Um, and exercising and doing the things that it had gotten me to the point that I was, and I was still able to lose weight while training for that marathon. Um, Part of that, I think, is because I didn't fuel my long runs and my races with junk. And when I say junk, it's the sugary stuff that's out there that, you know, a lot of people do use. When I tried using those in the beginning, they made my stomach upset. And I think a lot of that is that I had gone years, decades, consuming all those really bad foods, And when I completely changed my lifestyle, my way of eating, my body got used to being treated a lot better. And when I started throwing in those gels that are just pure sugar, you know, you can only tolerate so much of that before my body would just revolt. And I didn't feel well. You know, I would get done with a long run and I would just be wiped out for the rest of the day. And then I couldn't take care of my family and do everything that I needed to do with them, which wasn't fair to them to make, you know, Saturdays be mom's run day. And then she's going to be crashed on the couch day. 
So I found when I switched to you can that I could actually not only feel good throughout my whole run, no matter how long it was, but I actually felt better for the rest of the day. I'd come home from a 17 miler, take a shower and I'd say, okay, let's go hit the farmer's market. Let's go do whatever we need to do for the rest of the day and feel good and not feel exhausted. And that was a huge turnaround for me. Um, I tell a lot of people that you can change me from being a short distance runner to a long distance runner because I just don't think that I would have stuck with the long distance races for very long because of the sacrifices it would have meant for my family if I didn't have a good fueling source. Plus, it also helps me to learn to burn fat better, I think as well, to rely on fat as a fuel source so that I'm not just simply going out there and constantly having to load sugars in there for my running. So I also think that's what helped me continue to lose weight during the training and get a little bit leaner. You know, a lot of people would come to me in my running club and they'd say, oh, you're looking really trim, you're looking lean. And I would think, you know, I'm kind of doing the same thing, but I think that's why. That, that's really fascinating. Now, do you have the perspective of um, kind of note, like, did you ever train for a marathon kind of doing the, the traditional approach or the gel approach? And do you have like that perspective of saying, hey, for a long run when I'm utilizing you can, this is kind of my fueling protocol versus this is what I used to do? Or did you really kind of get into both simultaneously where as you were doing distance, you were also learning to incorporate you can? Well, in the beginning of training for the first full, I was trying to use traditional gels. Um, I had just kind of started to hear about you can and I was trying it just a little bit but I was still depending on those gels. And when I realized how they made me feel, I said, you know what, I need to go all in and I'm gonna try the UCAN and carry it with me on the run. Um, I've kind of become a pro at making the UCAN gels and carrying with me and I tell everybody, I said, it's worth it. It's worth it to know that when you're out there, you're gonna have this energy that's going to be steady, that you're not gonna to have to worry about making you feel lousy because the you know last thing you want when you're on a long run or in a long race is to start to not feel good um, in your stomach. You need to be able to just focus on getting those legs to turn over and, and get to that next mile. So for me, I did start with the traditional fuel and switched over to UCAN exclusively and that's all I use now. So, you know, you've now kind of perfected the fueling, you've, you've even, you're carrying your own fuel, you're, uh, you know, along the way, and you figured that out. Um, you, when we were speaking a few minutes ago, you said, like, when you first got into it, there was, you know, that thought of, like, am I even a runner? I'm not sure. Um, do you feel like a runner now with many marathons under your belt? And, and these, you know, or maybe the better question is really, like, when did you have the confidence? Like how many, how many, was it after completing that first race? Did you have to get a few races under your belt where, where it felt like, Hey, this is something that I'm into. Like, this is my thing now. Well, I think definitely that year that I ran the first half and the first full, I was starting to be convinced that, yeah, I'm a runner. I can call myself a runner. And I don't by any means think that you have to run a half or a full to be a runner. But for me, I just had to believe that it was like legit, that I wasn't just out there, you know, kind of faking my way through it. I was like, no, you know, I, I'm doing this and, and I'm doing things that, you know, a lot of people can't do or won't do. And I'm setting these goals and going out there and doing something that I thought was impossible at one time. And so it really sank in, you know, that year that I am a real runner. And um, I just, you know, I, I feel blessed to be out there. I don't take a mile for granted. Um, my dad was a marathon runner and he um, had to stop running when he had got, um, he was developed leukemia and got sick. And I could never understand why he was so upset that, you know, he couldn't run anymore because I was just a kid then and didn't get it. And unfortunately he passed away when I was 14 and it took me 20 years after that to figure out why it was such a big loss to him. Um, now I totally get it. So when I'm out there and I'm running and I'm feeling tired or I'm feeling like, oh, what are you doing out here? I just think, you think about how much he'd love to be out here running this mile and how many other people there are that would just love to be able to do what I'm doing right now. And so I definitely consider myself a, a real runner now. So. That's super meaningful. I was going to ask you kind of what motivates you um, to run and keep running. But I think with that story, um, you really you really just shared that and answered that um, in a really meaningful way. Um, Jennifer, I really want to thank you so much for being on with us, for sharing your story, how you got into running. I think it's super motivating um, just to see the progress. Like you said, it was just 
a year and a half or slightly over that where you went from doing this for the first time to running that first marathon and really feeling like you are a runner and, and you know, you're part of this community and, and you're able to keep achieving those PRs. So all, all the best. Hope there's many more PRs in your future. I think it sounds like there will be. Well, thank you so much. I hope so. It's a great community to be a part of and runners just are awesome people. You know, I've made so many great friends through this and I've made relationships in my running club um, with so many people that I can't imagine doing life without now. So I think they're stuck with me. I'm going to be running until I'm one of those 80 year olds out there. (laughs) Well, thank you so much, Jennifer, for sharing your story. For anybody who's tuning into this on Global Running Day, hopefully listening to what Jennifer has to say will make you motivated to get out the door and run if you haven't already done that today. Jennifer, thanks so much for your time. Thank you.